Last month, I came to pick up my three-year-old daughter from kindergarten, just like I do every day. When I entered the room, I was carrying this tote bag with me. Up until that day, her teacher, who is a native Arabic speaker, and I, a native Hebrew speaker, only exchange functional information between us. What my daughter did today, what she ate, who she played with. Suddenly, she turned to me and said, hey, your bag says market in my language. Her face lit up, and we started chatting, this time in a more meaningful conversation. On the bag was a word in a new hybrid writing system that I have invented. This seemingly functional moment, seemingly trivial moment, created a spark of magic. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure and honor to be here today, talking to you about written language and the great impact it has on our interpersonal relationships, our mindsets, and even a change we want to create in this world. This is a sign of my childhood street in Haifa. But guess what? One day, I became aware of the fact that I didn't even notice the Arabic on the sign. I don't speak Arabic. I never learned it, despite living in Israel. There was a piece on that sign of my own street, which I could not read. The automatic system in our brain, the one which is also responsible for how we read, likes to reduce our mental load by screening irrelevant information. Arabic was irrelevant to me. A bunch of incomprehensible shapes, always present on the sign, which my brain completely ignored. I was ignoring the Arabic for 30 years. Then I understood that this applies to my whole life. Haifa, my city, is like a poster city for coexistence. Neighborhoods dominated by different beliefs, different cultures, different religions, and different languages live peacefully, side by side. But in fact, we were not living in coexistence we were living in parallel existence. I grew up in my own community, parallel to the Arabic, but not touching. I felt the urge to do something. I didn't want my brain to ignore any longer. I wanted to make these parallel lines meet. I am a typeface designer. Letters are my tools. And by using them, I started an experiment. I wanted to connect the Hebrew and the Arabic to make people not ignore any of them anymore. This was quite challenging, since the Hebrew and the Arabic are different in almost every sense. The Arabic is connected, it is flowing, and it is curvy, whereas Hebrew Hebrew letters are written separately, and they are structured from straight lines and angles. Mm -hmm. Is it even possible to cannot connect the two? I began by drawing inspiration from the design world, cutting and stitching objects and examining the outcome each time. Is this new connection taking away from each of the objects to a state that they are losing their essence? Is the connection not doing anything at all? I was looking for places where this hybrid creates something new, areas where this new whole is greater than the sum of its parts. In my research, I found Louis-Emile Javal, a 19th century French ophthalmologist. And Javal discovered something quite interesting. He discovered that you need only the top part of Latin letters, 
in order to read. Here, let's see if this works for you. I really loved it, and I wanted to see if this works for Hebrew too. It didn't. <laughs> However, I did discover that you would need the bottom part of Hebrew letters in order to recognize them. Okay, that was good. Mm -hmm. I continued with the Arabic, and then I noticed, noticed that one needs the top part of Arabic letters in order to read them. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I found my system, and this is how it goes. The top half will be dedicated to Arabic, the bottom half to Hebrew. That way, if you're an Arabic speaker, you would read the top half. If you're a Hebrew speaker, you would read the bottom. I started connecting the letters, taking the top part of an Arabic letter and the bottom part of Hebrew, creating one hybrid letter merged, stitched together. I call this project Aravrit, a hybrid of the words Aravit, meaning Arabic, and Ivrit, meaning Hebrew. This was not a cut and paste solution. Each new letter was designed individually, keeping in mind to give the same respect to each of the languages and make sure that they are both recognizable. Here is how it's built. So in order to be able to write and read every word, I actually had to make all the possible combinations, every Hebrew letter with every Arabic letter. And this got me to the very small number of 638 new letters to design, and that was just the base for this. Remember the automatic system that we discussed earlier, the one that helps our, our mind ignore stuff? That same system doesn't let us not read a script we know. So please, I'm asking you now, very nicely, not to read the next slide. <laughs> You're all doing very good, it's just impossible. Once we read something, it is impossible for us to ignore it at all. My system uses this in a functional, simple way. People who read the words feel like they're solving a little puzzle. But there was one problem. As I mentioned before, I don't know Arabic. And although I could technically design the letters, I wasn't sure that they would really be legible enough. And I had no Arabic-speaking friends to ask. So I started talking to strangers on the train while I overheard speaking Arabic. I started showing them bits and pieces of these new words, of this new system, asking if they can read. Improving this system, testing it, I was doing it constant, constantly. And as awkward as it may sound, this was actually quite fun. All were keen to provide feedback. Even Hebrew speakers jumped in with their feedback on the Hebrew. These spontaneous moments were the first time for me that those parallel lines began to touch. Mathematically, it makes no sense. <laughs> you cut something in half, connect it, and yet you expect to create something bigger, more meaningful. Sounds like an impossible task, but it works. 
In Aravrit, one can read the language that they feel comfortable with, without ignoring the other one, which is always there, intertwined. I started this system mainly for myself, but quickly it began to resonate with people. People in Israel started asking for logos and t-shirts with Aravrit words. People in Arabic-speaking countries wrote me that this project brings them hope. A guy from Lebanon asked for the word theater in Aravrit, for a new play he's putting up in Beirut. Numerous people have been asking for tattoos in Aravrit, using it as a symbol of subtle unity to put on their bodies forever. Murals and graffitis started appearing in the streets of Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Haifa, even without my involvement. School teachers have been asking me to run workshops to teach children this new writing system. The president of Israel used the Ravrit for his holiday greeting to the public. Accelerated by social media, Aravrit spread beyond geography to places where people speak neither Hebrew nor Arabic. <laughs> places like the Philippines, India, Brazil, and even here in Vienna. People are writing to me on a daily basis, telling me how this project shifted their mindset and touched their hearts. <laughs> I try to think why Aravrit has such an effect. It is religion-free. It is effortless. It's about people being able to talk about each other and eventually talking to each other, providing clarity and dialogue without falling into cliches without planning how to insert a message, without trying too hard, magic happens. I'm not a political person, and honestly, avoiding politics in a project like this is tough. But I insist. Using this tool of language, which is simple and daily and effortless, helps to create this bridge. Someone reading who they are and reading who you are at the same time. The fact that all of these people with different agendas can read what is on one sign is a lot. It is a world of difference. Their backgrounds are irrelevant to the fact that in a single moment in time, they can all read the same thing and understand the same meaning. Now for a minute, let's open the scope. The same takeaway that is true for our Avrit is true for our existence. We are here. We are joined together. Our lives are intertwined, whether we like it or not. Creating this change, accepting it, will make a shift in our mindset, and then in reality. There is a larger notion which applies to all of us. In this day and age, the hybrid works. Let's stop doing apples and apples. Let's do apples and oranges. Try it for yourself. Take things. Put them together. See where it gets you. Training our mindsets to accept two things that seemingly clash, putting them together, creates a whole which is so much bigger than the sum of its parts. It can help us grow as individuals, maybe even as a society. Notice the seemingly trivial places in life. This is where magic happens. Thank you.